So the first 10 episodes of Transformers Earthspark are available to watch now on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, also, the first episode you can also watch on YouTube as of this recording. I, right after it aired on Nickelodeon, they put it right up on their uh, YouTube channel. And I'm sure the rest of the episodes are going to be you know, getting added to YouTube as the weeks progress. I did get to watch the first two episodes, like right before I moved. And that was part of the press junket, which allowed me to interview the voice actors and the executive producers. So at least when I asked them questions, and I knew what I was talking about. Um, but I didn't get a chance to do a review on those two episodes, uh, you know, beforehand, because, well, I mean, I was moving and I got here. So uh, now, uh, the, you know, the, all the episodes showed up on November 11th and uh, I signed up for the free trial for Paramount Plus uh, so that I can sit down and watch them all and I can give you guys my review. And I'm going to do my best to try to keep this review a uh, spoiler light. Uh, you know, maybe I might, there's a couple of different things that I'm, if I'm not too happy about, or I am happy about, I might go into a little bit, but I'm not going to like really go heavy into the actual details uh, of all of the episodes overall. Um, but yeah, so without further ado, let's sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's transform and roll out. To those of you who are new to the channel, uh, I am Rodimus Primal, and I primarily talk about Transformers uh, with retrospectives. I do discussions, I do news, and you know anything else that has to do with the Transformers. Uh, with over 96,000 subscribers, we're really shooting for that 100K. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you who has continued to watch my channel and anyone who is new as well. But I especially want to thank my patrons and my channel members uh, for all of their continued support uh, as I continue to make more content coming down the pipeline. So let's get on with this review. Uh, my first impressions of Transformers Earthspark, I'm not going to lie, they were positive. Uh, the first two episodes, they set up the status quo. You know, the family, you know, they move from Philly to a town aptly named Witwicky, uh, which is obviously a nostalgia uh, callback. And uh, this family, they, they're they're kind of not happy about where they're moving to. It's like, because it's a big move, right? I mean, I, I, exactly. I, I moved from, you know, New Jersey down here to Florida. And uh, so I kind of felt very much in the same like kind of like fish out of water kind of thing and so uh they end up finding this secret cave it's very much kind of like you know what it reminds me of transformers armada because they ended up going into this cave they end up finding a secret thing which brings to life brand new transformers very much like minicons but they're not minicons they're a brand new transformers race uh they eventually call them the terrans they're mentally bonded to the two kids uh, which I know some fans are going to be like, oh, great, here we go. Transformers bonded to humans. Like, it's it's like another thing. And and yeah, it is a call Mac to, to other Transformers series in the past, uh, but it does it a little bit differently this time around. And I'm not going to lie. I, I kind of enjoy that aspect of the show, like the, trying to teach the Transformer these new Transformers how to live their lives uh, on this planet since they're they're not they're not really fully Cybertronian. Uh, in a way, so like they are a very different uh, form of Transformers, and that's kind of cool. Um, but we're also introduced to you know old school favorites, Optimus and Megatron and Bumblebee eventually, uh, and then of course the main villain of the show, which is a human scientist this time around, and he's very much like Doctor Arkaville. Um, if you guys are familiar with the old G1 cartoon episodes, there was a human villain that was very much like him. And so I saw the similarities there, but it's not in any way related to it. And there's a lot of pleasant surprises like littered throughout the show uh, as the episodes progress. Um, but there are some things I, I didn't care for, like some things that just was like, uh, you know, I, I didn't like it you know in certain certain things so um but that was kind of to be expected i mean no transformers cart no transformers cartoon is going to be perfect and they revealed a lot of what i've already talked about in the promotional material so like again this is like not really uh new um they did you know and i also want to talk about the well publicized like g1 uh sequence that they used and the way that they did this was that 
they use this to tell the backstory of the Transformers for the you know for Earth Spark. They use the date September uh, 17th, 1984 as to the, the date the Transformers came to Earth, which is the airing date of the very first episode of the G1 cartoon. But here's the thing. It all that this did was it really kind of hit all of the nostalgia uh, cylinders. So it, they they took the animation models of the G1 cartoon. Actually not just the animation models. They took straight up like scenes from the G1 cartoon and redrew them over uh with a slightly vari very slight variations to the animation style in order to tell the story that they were trying to tell with it. And it was kind of cool, um, but it's like, here's the thing. Earthspark is not part of the G1 cartoon universe. All this did was it kind of confused some G1 fans into thinking that, oh yeah, this is a sequel to G1. No, it's not. This sets up its own backstory, and the way the Transformers come to Earth, there is no arc, but somehow there's Teletran 1, but they only say it name only, so that didn't make any sense. Um, so, like, there's a lot of things that just don't quite work if you're trying to shoehorn it into it being a G1 sequel. So it's not. It's its own universe. It has its own backstory. It does things completely different. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'm, I, maybe I'm a little bit tired of that. I understand that the newer fans just need, like, a jumping on point, And that's fine. But, I mean, they've been doing, you know, constantly rebooting the Transformers franchise with a pseudo G1 retelling like every year for the last 20 years and now we're just on the 2022 variety i mean ninja turtles has kind of done the same thing too uh you know and these are the kind of changes that you might have seen in like the 2012 ninja turtles and rise of the tmnt and now it's applied to the transformers uh with some of that nickelodeon flair so good bad ugly and all that kind of stuff uh which kind of gets me to the animation um the animation very much is uh, it's kind of like 2012 Ninja Turtles in its animation style, uh, in the way that the characters move, which is, it works for the show's tone. Don't get me wrong, but there's some of the there's some stiffness to some of the character models, just kind of the way that they they emote, the way they move, especially the when when humans are like in action sequences. I don't feel like an actual human is running, or a robot is like in the way that they're moving, but. The robot designs do work well. Nick Roche's animation style or, or, or art style worked well for a lot of the new characters, Twitch and Thrash. I actually do dig the, those two characters quite a bit, I'm not going to lie. And then, of course, you know, you had Megatron and RC and Soundwave. They looked all great. I'm not going to lie. RC's new, uh, you know, this whole update to her looks fantastic. So the same thing for Soundwave. Um, I like the idea of, okay, maybe you started with your G1 self and now you've kind of upgraded yourself into, into a new alternate mode that does work for the character, um, which is fine, you know, because it still feels like the, the, those type of characters. Uh, however, I am not a fan of Optimus Prime without his face mask. It just doesn't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> the minus the face mask, it doesn't work for me. Um, and same thing for Wheeljack. I don't like the handlebar, you know, beard. I would prefer that he always had his face plate and he had his flashy, flashy face. It just, it kind of gave the characters something special about them extra that I feel like is taken away. Like, in, and they even kind of make a joke, uh, with Bumblebee, like towards the end of the show that they're like, oh, what is this midlife crisis alternate mode with his sports car mode instead of being a Volkswagen bug? Um, I kind of felt that in a way, you know, that midlife crisis kind of thing. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> I could see where they were going with that. Um, which kind of my my final thoughts, so I'll, I'll get into it a little bit further. Um, and, you know, I also they, they decided with Optimus Prime's trailer is that when he does carry it, it just basically just sits there when he transforms and then he has to like reattach it in order for him to move on with it. Um, and I guess no subspace storage pocket with this particular cartoon universe. I guess that's fine. But, you know, the other thing that I didn't care for, like, like it almost seems like they borrowed from the IDW comics in the backstory and Cyberverse. They merged a lot of the storytelling, some of the character changes that they've made in Cyberverse, and they applied it to this, this cartoon in a lot of ways. And some of it, 
I'm okay with, and some of it I, I downright didn't like at all. And, and to give an example, Good Guy Megatron. I, I didn't like it done in the IDW comics. I don't like it now. And uh, it kind of, in a way, they've almost neutered Megatron, if that's the best way that I can describe it. Yes, he can still fight, but he can be taken out quite easily for being, like, the big bad guy. Like, how do you do that to to Megatron? Like, it just... I, I never liked it. And I also don't like the idea, like, Megatron is supposed to be, like, a tyrannical, you know, genocidal maniac. You know, um, how many Transformers and humans has Megatron killed, you know, over the years? And here, now, you're you're just got... You're okay with him being a good guy? Like, I'm sorry, but no. It just... It doesn't work for me. But... After the first two episodes were, were done and over with, I was actually quite positive on the show. I was I was like, yeah, like this is, um, you know, I'm I'm in, I'm digging this. Like, okay, I can I can see. I want to know what the backstory is with certain characters. I want I want there to be a little bit more deep deeper dive, and they do do that. Um, but by episode three, um, on it just starts to feel like a lot of filler. Like it just. It starts to weigh on, on the show. Starts to weigh down. You know, they they. I understand the first two episodes. They have to set up a status quo, but episodes three through seven just feel like it, it was. It was kind of a slog for me. Um, and there were parts of it I actually fell asleep. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, parts of Earth Spark I actually fell asleep watching, and I had to like pause, take a minute, get myself a drink, and rewatch the episode. Um, through those episodes, it was just. It was that boring. Um, but the action sequences for the show finally started to pick up around episode 8. And episodes 9 and 10, the way they did it is like they they combined them into one uh, on Paramount+. Plus. So you'll just kind of see like episodes 9 and 10 is like one episode that's like longer than episode 8 is. Um, but uh, the action in them is really well done. The way that they transform in midair and... You know, uh, you know, Skywarp actually makes an appearance, which that's a whole nother discussion. Um, but Skywarp uses uh, the teleportation powers in mid battle. You know, Megatron is transforming and like actually using his alt mode as a weapon as he transforms. Like it was really, really cool. Like the action sequences, I will give them that. Like that is when it was like, okay, finally some action sequences. But it, it when the show is is like heavy on the action. It's fine, but when it slows down, it slows down to a crawl in which I'm not... I don't know, like, there's just something about it that I just can't put my finger on. Um, that I did not feel, like, connected to the show. Maybe it was the kids, maybe it was the fan. Like, like yeah, like I said, like, those first two episodes, I was connected. But, like, I don't know. Maybe my expectations were a bit high. Or maybe the show was just really not aimed towards me, like... Uh, I'm finding the show, like, this cartoon is definitely aimed at a younger demographic. Typically, you know, a Transformers cartoon, you kind of want to see it, like, they, they usually age it towards, like, 8-year-olds and, like, 12-year-olds. And, you know, if you're someone who is an adult like me who grew up on old, old school Transformers, maybe you'll let your kids watch it too. But here, they definitely seem to have aimed it lower than that. Uh, like, above Rescue Bots and below... Transformers Robots in Disguise 2015 Cyberverse like it's somewhere in that like same demographic like it's like kind of in a way kitty and I I didn't um I I kind of felt like it was you know you you hit me with the nostalgia you know you you kind of baited me with that and so I watched it and then by the end of it I was just like I, I'm I'm not feeling it the same way like the action sequences are great and I'm glad that a lot of people are going to enjoy a lot of the cool stuff that's in Transformers Earth Spark, and there might be some stuff that just fans are just gonna gonna go roll their eyes at, and either they're not gonna watch it or what ha what have you, and that's fine, that's fine. Um, but I can definitely say the show just doesn't work for me the same way that I know that it's gonna work for some. But I want to know what you guys think. Uh, have you seen all of Transformers Earth Spark, and did you enjoy it? You think it was great? Or did you think it was not that great? Of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. I have many more Transformers discussions, news, retrospectives, and more coming down the pipeline. So stay tuned for all of that. And as always, guys, until next time.
till all are one.